What's going on everyone? My name is Alpha and today we're back with another Pokemon challenge video. Today we're on Pokemon X and today's challenge will be can I beat Pokemon X hardcore Nuzlocke using only shiny Pokemon. I know this video has been backlogged for over two weeks now. Contrary to popular belief, it's not easy to shiny hunt uh, for a hardcore Nuzlocke at all. We'll get into that in a little bit, but let's lay down the ground rules for this challenge video. So we want to start off with a Nuzlocke. First Pokemon in each route is the only Pokemon you can catch. In our situation, it's going to be the first shiny Pokemon you find in each route will be the only Pokemon you're able to catch. If a Pokemon ever faints in your watch, it is done. It is dead. If I lose any shiny Pokemon, that's all on me. I have to release them after all that hard work. And also, we have to add the hardcore bit on where we can only play on set mode, which means after beating an opponent Pokemon, you're stuck inside the battle. You cannot switch out your Pokemon. And also, there are no items inside the battle. You can use held items. You cannot use items in the bag in a battle. And as well, no over leveling. As you can see on the bottom left of the screen of the layout, you can see the level cap for each gym. Each gym has a certain level cap. We cannot go over the gym leader's aces Pokemon. You cannot enter a gym leader fight over the level. If that Pokemon is over that level, you cannot use them inside of that battle. Going to the Elite Four, we're just going to go into the max level, 65. And then whatever Pokemon gains XP is whatever they gain XP. That should be the end of the rules. Actually, no. The final and most important rule of every single challenge video on my channel. Each of my Pokemon will be nicknamed after you guys in the comments. So here are all the nicknames I've used for this challenge video. If you guys want to be nicknamed after a Pokemon in my future challenge videos, just drop it in the comments and hopefully I'll pick yours. And while you guys are also down there, please don't forget to leave a like, comment down below below some challenge videos just like this one and subscribe if you guys are not already it really helped my channel anyways let's get into the shiny lock so uh, to begin off as you see from the background of previous like four minutes uh, we've been shiny hunting chestpin now personally I do not like chestpin and I've had a lot of strong opinions about chestpin in the previous videos uh, and I just want to go out and be like you know what neutral ground neutral ground let's shiny hunt chestpin for you to shiny hunt a starter Pokemon in X and Y you have to watch this annoyingly long cutscene you just can't click a Pokemon and go luckily I'm playing on an emulator so it's sped up for me so the hunt time is quicker but it's not quick enough but eventually we're able to find ourselves a shiny chestpin as our starter Pokemon and we are finally get this challenge video on the way that's why it took so long because chestpin was not coming up at all Anyways, we found Chespin as our first Pokemon, and we're going to quickly save so we do not lose this at all. Uh, we're going to head into the first gym of the game. The first gym's level cap is going to be level 12, and we want to get to level 12, but not over level 12, or that's going to disqualify us. So we're going to get enough XP to when we beat one of the oldest Pokemon. We're going to get to level 13 inside of the battle, so we get more of an advantage. Heading into the first gym leader fight against Viola. Viola is going to be the bug-type gym leader of the game. And we're going to start the battle against her using our Chespin. And Chespin actually learned to move Rollout, which is amazing because that is a rock move which gets stronger after each use. Since her team is just a bunch of bug put one, we get a free use of Rollout. We can beat down her Surf Skit. Now, I've run through this multiple times. I've never seen her Vivalon use Infestation on my Chespin. I ran some test runs without Shiny Chespin. And I found out that Chespin never gets hit by infestation. I don't know, is that a coding error or something? Someone gotta tell me why the AI never attacks Chespin like that. After that, we beat Viola. We get the first gym match of the game pretty easily. And we also gain two levels in one battle. After that, we're gonna evolve our Chespin. I don't know why I showed this evolution, but not anything else. I evolved Chespin into a Quilladin. Well, it's not, it's not pretty. It's really not that pretty. I still don't like Chespin, by the way. <laughs> Anyways, after that, we're going to head into Professor Sycamore's lab. And we're just going to beat his entire team. Now, I would want to reset and shiny hunt for Charmander in this situation. Or Blastoise. Or even Venusaur, right? Problem is, we have to face off against Professor Sycamore each time you want to get, like, re-roll the starters. So, that seems like a waste of time. And we're not going to do that. Unfortunately, we can't shiny hunt any more starters, but it, it, we'll get to shiny hunting in a little bit. Don't worry, guys. Don't worry. But after that, we're going to go through all the tasks over here. We're going to get the Poke Flute for the Snorlax, of course. Finally, we're going to face off against Tierno and Trevor. Once we beat Trevor and Tierno, we get Honey from them. Now, Honey in this game will act like Sweet Sense, which attract Horde Pokemon. In Generation 6, it's basically the, it's basically the encountering of five Pokemon at once. And this is actually what, and this is what we want to do with the Honey. We want to save in our menus and then go into our bag, use the honeys we have, and then encounter 15 Pokemon, reset, encounter 15 more Pokemon, and then this is the quickest way to find a shining Pokemon in Generation 6. 
Well, there's other ways, but we'll get to those methods in a little bit. But this is going to be our main way of getting shiny Pokemon or shiny encounters. It's still going to take a little bit because it's still shiny Pokemon. When it rains, though, you cannot use honey, so we have to move locations. I don't mind that. I'm just trying to find any shiny Pokemon at all. I gave up on looking on Hoppets because uh, it's kind of a waste of time. I don't want to hop it. So I go back on the cliffside, and luckily, luckily, we're able to encounter a shiny Wingo as for one of our Pokemon. Now, Wingo might not be that good of a Pokemon, but I, for say, might be better than Jumpluff in single player. So, we're gonna catch ourselves a Wingo. The problem with Horde Battles is that, um, you gotta be careful who you attack, because if you attack the wrong square, it's not that hard to decipher which square it is, obviously, but if you attack the wrong square by accident, that shiny Pokemon is gone, because they're significantly lower than your actual level, so it's gonna be a bit dangerous at trying to encounter these Hordes. We do get it by itself, and then we end up catching the Wingo as our second shiny Pokemon, our first actually encounter Pokemon. So that is great for us. We finally get a team member and we can start rolling through. Uh, from here though, we're going to train up our Pokemon up to level 25 and very close to level 26. So when we beat a Pokemon, it will actually jump to level 26 on both of our Pokemon. And after that, we're going to head into the second gym of the game. In the second gym of the game, we're going to face off against Grant. Grant is going to be the rock type gym leader of the game. We're going to start the battle using our Pelipper against him. Water Pulse actually fuses a Moro down and then we're able to two-shot it without taking any damage. Fantastic. Next up, he's going to send in his Tyrant, which is kind of annoying. So I'm going to switch out into my Quilladin to Leech Seed it. He does a lot more damage to me than I expected. So that's kind of scary right there. Uh, so I want to switch back into my Pelipper. Luckily, Pelipper going to actually stall it out because he has Protect. This is one of the great things about Pelipper. It's actually pretty tanky. I know it's not buffed up from Sun and Moon just yet. It's pre-buff Pelipper, but it still gets the job done. It takes the Rock Tomb, and it's able to outstall the Tyrant and take another hit. And we're able to beat Grant without losing a single Pokemon. Pelipper is a fully evolved Pokemon, so you can't, you know, obviously it makes the gym battle easier. But early, I actually found a lot of appreciation for Pelipper. Now, I understand Quilted and Pelipper, weird combination, some unlikable Pokemon, but we're using some underrated monsters right now. Uh, they take down the Lucario too, so after that, we're going to head into Shellur City. Shellur City is going to be home of the third gym of the game, where we face off against Karina. This last trainer, before we face off against the gym leader, almost ruined our run. They almost gave us too many XP, where our Pelipper levels up to level 33. So luckily, we avoid that mess. And anyways, we're going to face off against Karina next. Karina is going to be the fighting type gym leader of the game. Uh, we're going to start the battle against her using our Quilladin. Now, I don't know why I did this. I don't know why I started the battle using Quilladin. Uh, Quilladin just kind of gets beat up by this Mianfu. <laughs> so embarrassing. Look at this. Uh, I do outspeed it. I should have just stayed in, but he kind of scared me out. I want to play safe because if I lose my Quilladin, I might just not post this video. I just might walk away from this. But switch out into my Pelipper. Pelipper will end up beating down the Mianfu for us. Uh, she can switch out into her Machoke. Uh, Machoke is getting rocked to me, and I'm like, oh, I don't want to deal with this. So I switch into my Quilladin for no reason. It is a risky play. Uh, I leech it to get recovery back on it, but I he hits me. I didn't expect him to hit me. I thought Machoke does not hit anyone. I thought the AI was dumb. He hits me with a rock tomb. Luckily, I survived, though, and then I'm able to switch out into my Pelipper. Uh, Pelipper can roost up and eventually knock out the Machoke for me. And then she's going to send out her final Pokemon, her ace Pokemon, which is going to be a Hawlucha. We're able to wing attack and then survive another hit and roost up in front of her. And then we're able to whittle it down and eventually beat Karina and get the third gym badge of the game at level 32. The kind of annoying part, I mean, right after we beat the gym leader, you just head into the next city. Uh, go to the train, head to the next city, and you go into the gym fight. I mean, the level cap is only two levels from the previous gym, so three to four is only two levels. It's kind of stupid. You kind of just have to deal with it because I mean, it might be a flaw. I mean, I don't like back-to-back -back gyms. It's kind of annoying, but most of X and Y is kind of like that. It's just gym heavy and then just plot and then gyms, and it's just it. Anyways, we're going to face off against the fourth gym leader of the game, which is going to be Ramos. Ramos is going to be the grass type gym leader. No one ever remembers him, I promise. Anyways, we're going to start the battle using our Pelipper. Pelipper actually got the sky plate right outside of the gym, so his wing attack is going to be boosted up, and he's pretty powerful. Uh, he's going to send out his Gogo -Go next. I decided to switch out into my Quilladin, because Quilladin... I, mean, I assume Quilladin could take more damage. It did not take more damage. But I'm able to bite it down, do some chip damage to it. Eventually, he's going to knock me around. And eventually, he's going to force me out. And we're like, Pelipper, save the day. I don't know what to do now. He's going to hit me with a takedown. Does a lot of damage. Luckily, I got to roost up and regain my HP. And at this point, I knew I needed to knock out the Go-Go. 
or it's going to start beating me down. So Wing Attack will knock out the Go-Go and it's going to send out his Weeping Bell next. I'm able to roost up in front of the Weeping Bell and we can finally get away from this thing. This thing is a scary monster. Uh, Wing Attack will eventually knock out the Weeping Bell. We get the fourth Gym Badge of the game and now it's time to uh, realize we need to go Shiny Hunting real quick. Because the next Gym is going to be the Electric Gym and we don't have any Pokemon to really stop it from destroying our team. So we decided to head to the desert which is conveniently the next place we have to go for the plot. Uh, in here, there's a lot of quick encounters in the dust uh, that just pops up at you. This is a great way to shiny hunt because they just come at you. Like a bunch of Pokemon just comes at you at the same time. And if you get lucky, you can get into an encounter chain, which can really save you some time. Unfortunately, I was trying to shiny hunt Trap Pinch or Gibble. We actually get... Mm, a Dug Trio, a shiny Dug Trio for our troubles. I don't know how to feel about this. We caught the Dug Trio, obviously, because it's a ground type Pokemon. It's gonna help us in the gym battle, and even if we run away, we can't actually encounter any more. Technically, our first encounter and our only encounter. So we end up catching this Dug Trio, and it became a modest nature. It's a modest nature Dug Trio with bad IVs and everything. So I mean, it was worthless to us, honestly. We can go through the power plant. It just I'm just so annoyed that he is a modest nature, the worst nature possible. He could have been like any other nature, like like a lonely nature. He could have been like an impish nature. I wouldn't mind, but he had to be modest. Anyways, we're gonna head into uh, the fifth gym of the game, the electric gym of the game. We're gonna start the battle against Clement with our newly acquired Duck Trio. We're gonna rock to the Mocha. Do not even do half to it, and the Mocha does way over half, and I'm like. Well, this is the situation I don't want to be in. I could rock to him again. I could get him low on HP, but that's all I can do against the Omoga. Like, I have to sacrifice Dugtrio and I lose one of my shiny Pokemon. Just because Dugtrio was so bad, it was the worst generated Pokemon possible. It was a modest nature one. If it wasn't minus attack on anything, it would have been perfect. It would have knocked out the Omoga and we can move on from there. But unfortunately, it ended up choking away that, and we had to send in our Chestnut. Chestnut takes a big hit, and then luckily Seed Bomb in Overgrowth range would knock out the Moga, and then Power Up Punch. Two Power Up Punch would knock out the Magneton for us, and she's going to send out a Heliolisk. I'm able to survive with Thunderbolt, and then Power Up Punch would knock out the Heliolisk, and we survive Clement. We lose a Pokemon. We always lose a Pokemon to him, but we just survive Clement, and that is the biggest sigh of relief. Uh, we get the TM for Thunderbolt, which will be useful later, but we got a box Duck Trio because, I mean, he's useless. So, it is an eye-opener. I decided to go Shiny Hunt the rest of my team. I decided to go to Route 12 and using the Horde Meth. I decided to hunt either Nidoran, Nidoran male or female, Stunky, or Starly. Most likely a Starly, and lucky enough, we do encounter a Shiny Starly front and center right there so we get ourselves a starly for our team four battles are really annoying but thank god they exist because shiny hunting is so much easier with them so we catch ourselves a starly kind of persistent in the ball catching but we're able to catch ourselves a starly next up we're gonna head into the routes where the skittles are i think it's route 12 and we're trying to encounter ourselves a milk tank uh, Milting is going to be very tanky for us, so it's going to be really nice for our team. There's Wingles in here. We're hoping we don't get a dupe and we get a shiny Wingo. Uh, luckily, we actually don't, and we get ourselves a Mareep. I don't know how to feel about this. I mean, I don't really do anything with it, so we're going to catch this as a Mareep, obviously. We unfortunately did not encounter a shiny Milting or a Tauros. Uh, we're going to catch ourselves a Mareep. It's a shiny Pokemon, at least. I mean, I don't think it's going to be that good. I don't use Mareep or Ampharos outside of like Heart Gold and Soul Silver, so I don't really know if it's good. So, and after that, we're going to head into Route 6 or something, something like that, where we've catch Inke. This is where we caught Wingo in the first place. We're not going to use this Inke on our team, but we just want to, like, you know, help ourselves. You catch an Inke or any Pokemon with suction cups uh, and you go fishing, it's going to have an automatic encounter. So, you always have encounter. And this will really help us in chaining our Pokemon. If you continuously fish and reel in Pokemon after Pokemon, you're able to build up a chain if you defeat the Pokemon. So, if we keep beating these Magikarps, our chain will grow larger and larger and eventually we're able to encounter ourselves a shiny Magikarp by chain fishing. Yes, I do have an Inke on my team, but I'm not really using him. I'm just using him as an encounter spot. We're going to catch ourselves a shiny Magikarp for our team, and it's looking good. Our team's looking really good. We're just missing one more Pokemon, and we're going to head into Route 9, something like that, where your Yamas are, Yamas, Nosepass, and Eevees. I'm just trying to look for one of those while using the Horde method, where we find ourselves a shiny Nosepass. So... Our team is actually looking pretty round up. Our team's looking pretty tanky, and we have multiple Intimidate users, so I'm actually pretty happy about our team. We're able to catch ourselves a shiny Nosepass, a gold shiny Nosepass. We have two gold Pokemon, 
a match carp and nose pass so it's looking pretty nice for us uh, once we capture that we're going to go into a training montage where all our pokemon will catch up in levels we're going to try to train our pokemon up to level 40 and then we're finally head into lavery city lavery city will have the sixth gym for us in here this is the fairy type gym and we're in face off against valerie to start the battle against Valerie and start the battle using our red Gyarados. My favorite shiny. People really think it's like awful because you get it for free. But honestly, it's actually pretty cool. I don't really care about the people who hate Gyarados. Because Gyarados is a cool Pokemon and it has a cool shiny. And it's also powerful as we knock out the Mawel for us. We don't want to risk anything against the Mr. Mime. So we'll switch into our Ampharos. We're in Thunder Wave it. Paralyze it obviously. And then we're going to slowly Confuse Ray and then Thunderbolt it down. Eventually, it's going to actually kind of scare me. It's going to get me low on HP. But his light screen wears off, and I'm getting chanced. Thunderbolt will knock out the Mr. Mime for us as she sends out Sylveon. Sylveon, I have a Steel type in the back. I should be able to handle this. Send in my Pro Will Pass. I'm able to Magnet Bomb and Thunder Wave it, and eventually just chip it down. It's going to heal up using a Hyper Potion and everything, but we're able to Magnet Bomb and knock out the Sylveon, and we get the 6th Gym Badge of the game. Next up, we're going to head into the Pokeball Factory, and after that, we're going to face off against Team Flare once again in the Ice Cavern. Uh, they are not that threatening at all. Next up, we're going to go into Anastar City. Anastar City's gym will be the seventh gym of the game, also the Psychic Gym. We're going to face off against Olympia. Olympia's going to actually be kind of annoying. We're going to start the battle against her Sigla using our Red Gyarados, just like always. We're going to try to set up in front of her. Uh, oh my god, this is so annoying. She ends up destroying me, as you can see. Look, Psychic is going to knock me down. It's pretty low. Uh, lowers my special defense too and i'm like oh well i can't even use my gyarados because i it's not a guarantee i don't know if it's a guarantee to knock out the siglyph or not so switch out into my pro pass to thunder wave it and then slowly chip it down using power gem eventually i'm able to knock it out using power gem gets me low too which is annoying uh then she sends out her meow stick i'm like i can survive any move so i'm gonna thunder wave it she's gonna fake me out it's kind of annoying so then call miners in front of me i'm like oh wait i don't have any pokemon to stop this my gyarados is low on hp don't want to risk my Star Raptor, and my Chestnut is part fighting type. So I decided to switch out into my Ampharos. Luckily, luckily, Ampharos might be the GOAT for this. It might be the best Pokemon. Thank God I caught that Marie. So I Confuse Ray it, Thunderbolt, Confuse Ray it, and then eventually it's going to hit itself in confusion at the crucial moment where I Thunderbolt it, and then it's not going to heal up for some reason. And we beat the Meowstic, even though it got like a plus four uh, special attack and special defense against me. So that was pretty scary uh, facing off against that. And then finally her Slow King in the back. I'm going to switch out my Ampharos. It's trying to put me to sleep. But I'm able to Thunderbolt it with my Ampharos. And two shot it will knock him out. And we get the 7th gym badge of the game pretty easily. Next up we're going to head into the Team Flare hideout. We're going to beat down every Grunt member. Also we beat like Lysander like 3 times here. So that's kind of funny. Uh, for a team named Team Flare. They are very lacking in Fire type Pokemon. I've realized. Uh, the main boss obviously has a Pyroar. But... Outside of that, what, do they have a Houndoom once in a while? That's about it. They have more Manectrix and Mightyana than anything in the world. They have Golbats too. I, I've never seen a Zubat in this game. I swear, they don't exist. There's like a Houndoom in like every 1 in 10 battles. So, it's not really Team Flare, I must say. But after that, we catch Xerneas and everything. We face off against Lysander. Lysander is going to start the battle against us using Nian Shell. We're going to aerial uh, knock out Nian Shell. And then, then he's going to switch out to Pyro. Ah! This is why Star Raptor is broken. Close combat, just destroy his Pyroar, and then he's gonna send out his Honchkrow. This is where I decided to Thunderbolt, knock him out using my Ampharos, and then he's gonna switch out to his Mega Gyarados. Uh, he's gonna get clapped up as I switch into my Chestnut. Just walls him completely, and then Seed Bombs him. Uh, he's gonna take a lot of damage from a uh, Seed Bomb, and then I could Spiky Shield once again. Switch into my own Gyarados, and Gyarados versus Gyarados. My Gyarados obviously wins, as you can see, as he hits himself in confusion. And we beat Lysander, and, and he throws a temper tantrum. After that, though, we're going to beat Trevor for the final time, and we are going to get the HM for Waterfall. Next up, we're going to head into the 8th gym of the game. The 8th gym leader in the game will be Wolfric. We're going to start the battle against his Bomb Snow using our Pro Pass, because it's the only thing that could really work against him. Uh, we're going to Power Gem him. Just not do over half. It's kind of scary. So I'm a Magnum Bomb. He crits me again, and I'm like, oh, cannot take any more damage. I got to switch out right now. Switch out into my Gyarados. Because uh, I want to start setting up. Maybe I could just finish him off real quick. Uh, pause. <laughs> Anyways, I boost up in front of uh, the bomb stone and then knock him out using bite. Just two bites will knock him out. And then he can switch out into his Cryagonal. Cryagonal is going to get one shot at with the waterfall. No risk of missing unlike Aquatail. Unlike Aquatail as he sends out Avlock next. I switch out into my Pelipper. This was a bad idea. But he's going to curse up in front of me. I surf it. I crit it luckily. 
And then he's getting an avalanche, almost knocked me out with 1 HP, oh my god. And luckily, Hale is not on the board, and I, I just had to calm down for a second, and then Surf will knock him out, and we hit the 8th gym batch of the game without panicking. Oh, that would have been really bad if we just lose a Pokemon right now, as someone important as Pelipper too. So, once we're done with that, we get all 8 gym badges of the game, we can finally head into Victory Road. Now, Victory Road has this cool cutscene, but I mean, there's nothing too much... Our team is pretty tanky. It could take on any trainer, I believe. So, after we go through Victory Road, we're going to head back into the Incense uh, Dealer. <laughs> dealer? He's not a drug dealer. But, he's an Incense Dealer. We're going to get ourselves some C Incense and also a Max Out on Lax Incense. Because they're actually really useful, if you've ever seen my playthrough. They cause moves to miss at a pretty high rate. So, anyways, that's going to be a nice insurance. We're going to put that as Hell Items on all our Pokemon. As we head into the Elite Four next, the Elite Four Challenge... It's going to start off facing off against Malva. Malva's going to be the fire type elite form member of the game. We're going to start the battle using our Gyarados against her. Uh, obviously, Dragon is right in front of the Pyroar. Pyroar's going to wild charge and do no damage at all. I'm like, what? What kind of wild charge was that? Anyways, Waterfall will knock out her Pyroar. Uh, you can see where this is going. Waterfall will knock out her Torkoal. And then her Talon Flame. And then, of course, her Chandelure in the back. And we completely sweep through Malva with only four Pokemon. Which, I don't know why she only has 4 Pokemon. This is the end battle. Why are we just kind of cutting cheap on it? I know I talk about it all the time, but it is a criticism. Why is there only 4 Pokemon for each Elite 4 member? It just doesn't make sense. Next up, we're going to face off against Wingstrom. Wingstrom is going to be the stereotype Elite 4 member of the game. We're going to start the battle using Big Boss, Gyarados. You can see how much I'm excited to use Red Gyarados in a playthrough. But I'm able to knock out the Klefki with a boosted up Dragonance. Uh, I don't know why I did this because Probopest obviously has Discharge on him and he's going to send up Probopest right after I beat his Klefki. So he's going to send up Probopest. I'm like, that's a bad idea. Switch out into my Chestnut next. Chestnut can take pretty much any hit, especially with Leech Seed up and Spiky Shield. It is a, it is a winner for me. So I want to Power Up Punch, get my attack boosted up, and then I want Spiky Shield to get my HP back just in case. And then Power Up Punch to knock him out. Uh, waste a bunch of turns, get my HP all the way up. It's fun. It's fun like this. This is where I'll give Chestnut credit. This is the battle where I'll give Chestnut credit. Chestnut's actually a pretty good Pokemon. Surprisingly, I've actually never used Chestnut outside of, I don't know, random battles on Pokemon Showdown. So this is why I always like make fun of Chespin users and everything. Chestnut's actually pretty good in X and Y, like Generation 6. Uh, we're able to 1v1 the H slash right here, and we're actually able to destroy Wingstrom, as you see. Uh, with Power Up Punch and Lead Seed uh, and Spiky Shield, of course, we're able to knock out his entire team and stall out his entire team. Like, this is actually the most competitive, like, viable strategy right now that I'm using. Like, Lead Seed, Spiky Shield, and then beat him down. Like, it, it, it's impressive enough that Chestnut can pull this off, but we're able to beat Wingstrom and we beat the second Elite Four member. And next up, we're going to head into the Dragon type Elite Four members room. We're going to face off against Drasna. Uh, Drasna can start the battle against us using Draglich. Big deal, we can use always can start the battle using our Red Serpent. Dragon is right in front of the Dragalich. This game scared me with Thunderbolt. I'm going to Ice Fang it real quick. Ice Fang the Altaria as well. And then I know it can outspeed the Northern, so I'm going to Ice Fang that thing as well. I, I don't want to play with this. This thing is scary. Dragon is scary, so I want to switch out into my other Pokemon. Switch into Chestnut. Force me into other Pokemon. I'm able to get into my Star Raptor next. Aerial Ace will knock out the Dragon for us. And we beat the third Elite Four member. Next up, we're going to face out against Sealberg. Sealberg's going to be the water type Elite Four member of the game. Our Pokemon, our team is actually kind of well equipped to face off against him. We're going to start the battle against him using our Ampharos. Uh, Thunderbolt will one shot the Clarwitzer, as you can see. Outspeed him too. And then he's going to switch out into his Gyarados. I'm like, well, I don't want to take an Earthquake. I don't think I can take an Earthquake at this range. I want to switch out into my Star Raptor. He's getting Dragon in front of me, which I'm like, oh my god, I should have just Thunderbolt. If I just Thunderbolt, this battle would have been over. But. Swing so in my Star Raptor, I had to do some damage to it, but I don't do enough to it, obviously. Switch out into uh, my Pro Pass, and then kind of force him into, like, Earthquake or Surf or something. As I switch into my own Gyarados, I'm just trying to, like, outplay him at this point. I get my own Dragon Dragonance up, and he's kind of scaring me. He's at, like, plus 3 or something. Plus 3, plus 4. I strength him, I get him low on HP, does not knock him out, obviously. And then, like, Ice Fang, cross my fingers, Ice Fang. Freeze, I actually get the freeze on him. And unfortunately, uh, I don't do enough with my Ice Fang where he full restores in front of me. And then I Ice Fang once again. And luckily, luckily, I get a second freeze on the Gyarados as he gets plus 6. And I'm able to Ice Fang once again and knock him out and never had to deal with that. 
Oh my god, if he just used one move, he would have just knocked out like half my team, I promise you. After that, he's going to send out his Barbarical. Obviously, he has a Chestnut in the back. Seed Bone will knock him out. And then he's going to send out his Starmie. Now, Starmie has a lot of coverage. I wanted to outplay all of them. So, I know he's going to Psychic, so I switch into my Pro Pass. And then in Pro Pass, I want to switch out into my Gyarados to absorb the Water move. And then into my Ampharos. Uh, you kind of get mixed up. He does not have Electric moves. So... There goes that. So, sitting my Ampharos, uh, he has a light screen up, so I decided to Thunder Wave him instead. Uh, that should be fine as I switch into my Gyarados to eventually beat it down, and we beat Shieldberg. You know, pretty risky. That Gyarados could have knocked out my entire team, but we end up beating Shieldberg, and we finish the Elite Four. Next up, we're going to face off against the champion of the game. The champion of the game will be Diantha, her humongous room, as you can see. So, she can start the battle against us using Harlucha. Start the battle using my Star Raptor. Air Lace would knock out the Halucha in one shot. This thing is so powerful. Oh my god. Star Raptor, calm down. And then she's going to switch out into her next Pokemon. Her next Pokemon will be Tyrantrum. I could have risked it. Could have used Close Combat, but didn't want to risk it right now. Switch in my Chestnut. Chestnut takes, oh my god, takes a double crit, as you can see. Takes like a Dragon Claw and a Head Smash crit. And then I got to restore my HP a little bit because this thing is kind of scary. Uh, eventually, Power Punch would knock him out, which is fine. Outspeed him too. Dodge a Dragon Claw from the Lax Incense. I'm telling you guys, Lax Incense is the key. And then she can switch out into her Morris. I'm like, hmm, gotta outplay this. Switch into my Pro Pass. And then I know it's gonna have Earth Power. So I'm gonna switch out my Pro Pass into my Star Raptor. Sets up Light Screen, whatever. It would have been a cooler play if you used Earth Power, but close combo with one shot the Aurorus. And then next up, she can switch into her Gudra. Uh, obviously, I don't have too much to uh, stop this thing. So I decided to switch into my Ampharos to get a Thunder Wave off against it. Uh, turns out it does not have any like coverage at all. No Earthquake or nothing. So I decided to switch out into my Gyarados. Gyarados is going to uh, take a Dragon Pulse and then Ice Fang it. Two shot it would knock him out. Doesn't have Thunderbolt. I swear it had Thunderbolt or something. Anyways, two Ice Fang would knock out a Gudra as you can see. Next up, she can switch into her Gorgas. I decided to switch back into my Star Raptor. Star Raptor Air Release and knock out the Gorgas. And oh my god. For some reason, Sir Ramsey, I got too cocky. I didn't lose a single Pokemon through the entire Elite Four run. I got too cocky against the Gardevoir, and the Gardevoir one-shots me with Thunderbolt. I, this is the Pokemon that has Thunderbolt. Everything else that I assume had Thunderbolt did not have Thunderbolt. So, Star Raptor gets knocked out, and I'm like, oh my god, of course, I lose something at the end. But luckily for us, this thing doesn't have Focus Blast, so I could Magnum Bomb, eventually knock out the Gardevoir, and we're able to beat Dianta. We beat Dianta, we beat Pokemon X, Hardcore Nuzlocke using only shiny Pokemon. I am very ecstatic to show you guys this and finally finish this project. It's been in the works for a little bit now, but I'm glad we've been able to finish this. Anyways, we are going to head into the ceremony fight against AZ and just an easy fight in the background. I'll do my outro now. Thank you so much for watching all the way today and I hope you guys all enjoyed this amazing challenge video. Amazing! It means a lot to me you guys that watch all the way to the end. Hope you guys all enjoyed this video. Please uh, don't forget to leave a like, comment down below, some challenge videos just like this one, and subscribe if you guys are not already. It really help my channel. Also, join the Discord. Discord in the links in the description and the comment section, and follow my Twitter and everything. Anyways, thanks for watching. My name is Alpha. Hope you guys all had a great day. I'm out. Peace.